Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. Recently I built a cheap and cheerful mill power drive. See below for reference. What surprised me was how much I used it. Enough to make it worthwhile building a somewhat better one. Coming up after this. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about making mill power feeds, so why do I want to make one? Well, two reasons really. Firstly, most of them are huge engineering constructions made out of steel plate. The forces involved are quite low, a much simpler system will work quite well. And secondly, none of them seem to use the enable signal that is provided on the drive units. This is usually left not connected, and this puzzled me. How can it work without being enabled? Turns out it's not an enable signal at all, it's a disable signal. Apply power to this input, and it disconnects all power from the motor. And that of course is great. It means you can turn it by hand when it's not actually working. This is my current drive system. See below for the build. And although it works quite well, at one or two points I'm not too happy with. One is you have to actually engage the gears when you want to use it and disengage of course when you want to go back to manual and secondly the lever and the direction switch is above the bed. This means if you're using long material it can obstruct it. Here's the initial setup with a small Arduino Nano to provide the pulses. Apply power and the motor starts turning. Adjusting the potentiometer. Varies the speed. I like to design from my spares box and it yielded up these two tooth wheels and a belt. First step is to dismantle the current system. This is easy as it is only held on with one stud and one set screw. The gear wheel was removed to be replaced by the toothed wheel. This was then put in the lathe and bored out to match the colour. This matches the colour on the shaft giving a positive location. The other tooth wheel was 5 16 That's around 7.9 millimetres. So I reamed it out to 8 millimetres. Oops, a bit short. What was it Robbie Burns said about the plans of mice and men? Still, bearing boys do a great range of belts at very reasonable prices. Must get ordering. New belts arrived, so time to mount the motor. The mount is of simple construction, consisting mainly of 3mm alloy plate, with a block of aluminium and a stud acting as supports. This is extremely rigid and more than strong enough. Next decision is where to mount the control box. On the bed would be convenient, but there it's open to dust, dirt, chippings, oil. Not really a good idea. The mill head is already a bit crowded. So I decided under the DRO was a good place. The case was 3D printed the space for the Arduino Nano built in. The controls were mounted in the box and this is the rat's nest version ready for testing and lightly laced to tidy it up. And here it is in place. One thing I want to fit is limit switches on the traverse. I have a couple of these micro switches to use as limit switches. I could just bolt them in place then fashion a cover over it. But with 3D printing there's an easier way. I printed a cover like this and then the limit switches just push over the pegs into place. The switches were wired up and attached using a single 4mm bolt.
It has a direction control, a fast button, speed adjustment and a display in millimetres per second. Gives a wide range of speeds from very slow to quite quick with high speed. About as fast as I can wind it. The rattling noise, by the way, is just the handle. When not actually being driven, it's free to turn by hand. No discernible difference to without the drive. So there it is, my new middle drive unit. A bit of an improvement, I think you'll agree. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, why not subscribe? See you next time.